well as uh, my colleague, Carrie Starr, as well. Um, and I think, uh, unless there's anything else, without further ado, let me introduce our, our presenters today. First of all, and foremost, uh, we have Dr. Vicki Hart epidemiologist extraordinaire and yellow dig uh, power user, uh, associate professor at the University of Vermont. I don't know if I said that already or not. Uh, and Vicki, uh, we're excited to uh, have you with us yet again um, and looking forward to uh, hearing about the research that you've done and how uh, your work has gone uh, using yellow dig as a help form. And of course we have yellow dig guru and uh, head of client success uh, Dr. Brian Verdine here as well uh, to, uh, you know, uh, have the conversation and, and fill in some of uh, the yellow day blanks and I'll be here as well. Um, and finally, before we get started, I wanted to ask uh, our colleague, Kaylee Starr, if there were any announcements you wanted to make about upcoming yellow dig events uh, so we don't just leave that till the end. Sure, I can absolutely do that. Um, probably most notably is our um, upcoming conferences that we're going to be participating in uh, that Brian is going to be presenting at. So um, if you would like to learn a little bit more about Yellow Dig, um, we actually are going to be at the WCET um, annual conference. We're doing like a seminar series. So that'll be on Monday, November 9th. Um, I can put all this information in the chat as well as um, include it in the email when we send it out. Um, and then we'll also be at OLC Accelerate presenting on November 12th, which is a Thursday. Um, so those are some ways that you can connect with the Yellow Dig team. Um, on top of that, we also have a demo that we are putting on next week um, on November 5th. So I will drop the sign up details for that in the chat and we'll also include it in the follow-up email as well. Well, thank you, Kaylee. And so uh, without further, uh, I guess, ado, whatever ado is, <laughs> let's go. And here's uh, Vicki and Brian. Thanks, Bob. Um, yeah, Vicki uh, was planning on just sort of talking through some of her use case to start out with. Um, and, and letting us know how she was using it in the platform. Um, and then, you know, the sort of uh, flow after that is I was going to talk about some of her outcomes um, from the community health dashboard. Um, and I was going to talk through that part because, uh, you know, there's some interpretation there that I think will be helpful for everybody in sort of uh, how and why we're showing some of those metrics. Um, and then Vicky's going to present on sort of uh, research that she did uh, from her own course and talk about the outcomes of that research, um, which, you know, was completely independent of us. And, and thank you, Vicki, for, for taking a look at that. So uh, if you want to uh, take it away. Yes, gladly. Um, Brian, I'm getting an alert that I can't start my video because you've stopped it. Is there a way to, to get that going so I can chat with folks? Oh, sure. Um, sorry, I thought you were able. There oh, we go. <laughs> there we go. I'm on. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much for um, for having me today. I'm super excited to to be here and talking about this. Um, I'm such a huge Yellow Dig fan, so it's really great to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about how I'm using it and also you know, learn from everybody who's listening because we all have different ways of making this tool work for us. Um, so a little bit of background. I've been using Yellow Dig for about two and a half years and I teach graduate level epidemiology and biostatistics courses in the UVM Master of Public Health program. Uh, our program is 100% online and it's 100% asynchronous. So students are never like in real time classes with each other, they're never in class together and they may, may never be real time with each other throughout the whole program. So it's great for our professionals who are working around like kids and work schedules, but it's also really important for us to find ways for students to connect and collaborate and have conversations with each other because it can get super isolating, especially now when we're all kind of suffering from too much isolation. Um, I struggled for a really long time. So these are really quantitative classes 
and how to like I wanted to have a discussion platform in my classes because it's great to have the students to have a way to connect, but it was really hard to find ways to make that useful and something that the students are learning from and not just like a check the box every week to get this done for the final grade kind of assignment and yellow dig has helped immeasurably with that but i found that it's it's really come to life for me since i started promoting and encouraging the use of yellow dig as a help forum where students can go for peer-to-peer q a support and learning with each other so that's a little bit about what i wanted to talk about today um, as Brian said, I'm just going to kind of go through some of the logistics about how I've set up the help forum, but I would love to learn from other people on the, the call. And then a little bit later on, I'll also talk about some of the outcomes research that I've done with this. So just um, a little bit about how I set up the help forum. I encourage and promote it right from the very beginning of the class. So even in my syllabus, when I talk about the discussion component of the class, I'm letting students know that one of the primary uses is as a Q&A help forum for them to, to work with each other. Um, I do an intro video at the beginning of the class where I, I talk a little bit in general about the discussion, but one thing that I do is to give them two good reasons why using a help forum is a great idea. One being that um, they probably get a response from their peers a lot faster than they're gonna get a response from me. You know, students tend to be working late at night or on the weekends. And if they post a question on Yellow Dig, they're going to get a response with somebody where they can move on and keep going with the assignment a lot faster than if they email me, wait for me to see it, wait for me to respond and get back to them. So that's that's a huge benefit for them. And I also tell them that, you know, we, we see in the education literature that just that formulating of a question or formulating the answer to a question has benefits for long term retention and learning the material. And so, you know, I want to share with them that this is another reason why we're doing this so that we are helping them learn the material in the best way possible. Um, another thing that I do that's really important is setting the expectations around academic integrity, that there are some assignments that it's okay to collaborate on on Yellow Dig and to talk about and to share responses and, and to really get into with each other. And then there are other things like the, the tests and the quizzes that it's not okay to collaborate on. And the way I kind of see this is like if we were meeting in a classroom setting in person, there'd be those minutes at the beginning of class and those minutes at the end of class where students are you know, chatting with each other and they're, they're saying like, I didn't get number seven, can you help me with this? Or I got this really weird answer for number two, is did you get the same answer? And I want them to have that same opportunity to talk on Yellow Dig and, sh and share their answers and share what they're worried about. Um, but then there would be other things like tests and quizzes in class that I'm trying to assess them independently. And so this is the same thing and setting those expectations up front. Throughout the class, um, there's also a couple of ways that I've kind of changed how I interact with Yellow Dig in order to support the help forum. Um, just for context, my discussions don't have discussion prompts. Um, they're very open discussions just about the learning material. So um, when I'm working in the discussion board, I'm doing some of that, but I'm also paying special attention to the help forum. I'll go in and I'll filter on, on that topic just to, to check in and make sure things are going okay. Um, one thing is just to make sure things, you know, answers aren't going too far down the wrong track, which I've actually found to be pretty unusual. Mostly students are really good about doing things back and forth, getting to the right answer, or if they're worried, they'll at mention me in the post to kind of raise their hand and say, hey, we're stuck, can you come in and help us? Um, I also look for messages that, or for posts that aren't getting answers. You know, maybe somebody posted at a weird time and nobody saw it right away and other posts have come down on top. And there's an example of this here while I'll just put in a little, like I'm commenting to bump this to the top of the feed. Can anybody help out the student? Um, and typically somebody will jump in and say, oh yeah, no, I know I can help you out with that and I know the answer. Um, I make the Yellow Dig posting a suggestion when students email me, and this is um, something I especially do in the beginning of the semester, and it's great for me because as a, if a student emails me for help, you know, I'll give them a hint, but I'll say, hey, check out such and such a post on Yellow Dig, or post this question on Yellow Dig because I'm sure other students have the same question. And it's great for the student because they, you know, they get to have that interaction. It's also great for me because students learn that I'm doing this and they'll start taking their questions to Yellow Dig 
instead of emailing me with every question, um, which keeps my inbox a little bit a little bit lighter. Um, but also, you know, it allows them to engage and interact with each other. And they know that they do have the option of at mentioning me in a post if they feel stuck and they're not getting the answer that they're looking for. But it does kind of reduce those, you know, those repeated questions on the same material that used to come into my inbox. But now students are able to get those from another resource. Um, and then finally, I'm really generous with reactions, accolades when I see um, students have a really good or helpful answer and make sure that I give them a, an accolade to, um, to say to them and to other students, hey, you're on the right track. Um, and just also to be supportive of the help forum in general, to be encouraging it. And I encourage it in my sort of weekly communications with the class and, and a lot of different, you know, anything that I'm saying during, during the course of the semester. I'm usually, you know, saying, hey, I'm seeing some great conversations about this on Yellow Dig, you know, this, that, or the other throughout the class. Um, I think there's, there's two reasons for that. Again, to help them know they're on the right track. And also just um, if students are seeing my thumbs up and my accolades, then they know that I'm on the board. And even though it has never, ever been a problem yet in my courses, uh, I think that also you know, just discourages students from talking about problems that they shouldn't be talking about and assignments that, that it's not appropriate to collaborate on. Brian, if you could move forward. Yep. I just wanted to provide a couple of examples of how students have learned to creatively use this. Um, I'm sure the text is super tiny on your screen, so it's not important what they're writing about, but just to see some of the ways that students have found to share information, to work with each other, to help each other out. Um, as I said, I teach epidemiology and biostats, so these are some pretty heavily quantitative courses. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna date myself here, but when I was learning this material and especially the statistical software, I was in a computer lab and it was so important to have you know, somebody on the computer next to me that I could say, hey, I can't figure out how to make it do this, or are you getting the same answer that I am because this seems really weird. And so students are finding ways to do that with each other through this platform. So they're sharing equations, they're sharing snapshots of spreadsheets, they're finding ways to annotate and to, to share that material with each other. I think it's really great for the students who've asked the question because obviously they're getting some support in completing their assignments, but I think it's almost better for the students who are answering the question because we all know that the best way to learn something is to teach it. And so these students are having to formulate these answers and create explanations in ways that their peers are gonna understand. And it's a real benefit for their learning as well. Um, so I think Brian's gonna talk a little bit about what impact using Yellow Dig as a help forum has on the metrics that Yellow Dig provides to us. And then I'll jump back in and talk about some of those, those learning outcomes um, and the research that I've done to see how things are going for these students. Hey, Brian. Great, thanks, Vicky. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit through our community health uh, dashboard and, and outcomes that Vicky had. Um, and you'll be able to see these within the platform, um, you know, from the left-hand navigation uh, menu for your communities. Um, and one of the tabs is sort of an overall, uh, you know, course level outcomes that show you how many total posts and comments have been made uh, and then broken down per active member or student. Um, and within that page, one of the things that we surface is the conversation ratio. And this is really just the number of comments per post. Um, and if you think about a discussion forum, uh, the one thing that you would hope is that students are actually discussing the things that are being posted. Um, and also, if you think about a sort of standard discussion assignment, usually it's something like create one post per week and then comment on two other students. That would be a conversation ratio of 2.0 if everybody did it exactly as you asked them to. Um, and one of the things that we look for in Yellow Day is a conversation ratio that's significantly higher. Um, and you can see that, you know, Vicky has achieved that with, with um, you know, her class here. And, uh, you know, we, we really haven't seen an, a high end of this that becomes damaging. Um, but what, we will, what I will say is that we repeatedly see that this conversation ratio 
predicts almost every other positive outcome for a course. Um, and I just ran a, an analysis on uh, one of our university partners earlier this week. Um, so just for example, we found correlations uh, between this conversation ratio and student posts and comments of 0.49. So the higher the conversation ratio, uh, more stu student posts and comments. Uh, a, uh, a correlation of 0.7 for the conversation ratio uh, for uh, the number of posts that had reactions affixed to it. So students are uh, not only talking back and forth more, but they're more likely to sort of react to one another. And, um, you know, we've seen that those reactions indicate that students have actually read the posts that they're reacting to. Um, and we, we found a correlation of 0.41 with total word count. Um, so this conversation ratio predicts a whole bunch of other positive outcomes. And if I had one suggestion overall for the use of Yellowdig is that you really want to get students actually talking. And so you should try to get this conversation ratio um, so that you have, you know, uh, more of a discussion about fewer posts maybe um, overall. So within the, the community health dashboard, there's, there's a, a health check area and um, there's some scores in that area uh, that I wanted to just talk through. So everybody understands what's going on and to help interpret sort of what we're seeing from Vicky's course, right? So there's three score areas. It's a sharing score, listening score, and interacting score. The sharing score is really all about how much a student is producing within the community. So number of posts, number of comments, word count, links shared, et cetera. This would be really, um, you know, if you think again about a standard discussion type of assignment, we focus on the students having to produce something. The two other score areas are really more about sort of consuming posts or uh, consuming the content that's posted or interacting with other students. Um, and you'll see that Vicky's score in the sharing score area is about 50. Um, and that score is based on uh, the per average percentile of all of these variables underneath of it compared to Yellowdig's global averages, right? So you might think, well, you know, Vicky's not doing really great on sharing here because her students aren't producing a lot. But we would interpret that a little bit differently. When, when people are using um, sort of standard discussion prompts and an assignment-based uh, sort of structure, they can drive this score pretty high because they're requiring students to do a certain amount of production of content. What typically happens when those scores go up is that the listening scores and interacting scores tend to go down because everybody's just producing content, but nobody's really reading it or, or actually talking about it, right? So what Vicky's scores here are showing us is actually something a little bit closer to what we would want, which is that, you know, everybody's sharing a little bit, but then they're actually reading the things that are posted. They're actually talking about the things that are posted they're truly interacting and exchanging information. So I wanna to jump to the next slide just to show her sort of listening scores. These are the three variables we incorporate into listening, which is the average number of posts viewed. Uh, we put the conversation ratio there because what we find is that the more students actually talk back and forth, the more they're actually reading those posts again and sort of clicking into hyperlinks. Um, and then the other, um, Final score is interacting. So this is the number of rea reactions that students are giving out to one another. Um, the percentage of the class that's actually connected with one another. Um, and and the, this last uh, variable is actually pretty interesting. This is the number of posts uh, or, or the percentage of posts with at least one comment, right? So one thing that tends to happen in a lot of standard discussion forums is that people will post something uh, and then nobody will actually ever respond to some of them. Um, in Yellowdig, what we're hoping is that sort of every student that posts is going to get responses and get good conversations going with their students. And you can see that that's happening in Vicky's case, especially. Um, so, you know, what we found overall is that those, those sharing scores are often set by the expectations of the instructor um, and sort of how many points are required. but um, the types of, of interactions can really um, 
uh, help drive up those other listening and interacting. Uh, so that's some of the interpretation of that. And just to show sort of um, how connected her course really is, um, I wanted to bring up the community connections um, uh, for the network graph that you'll see in the, in the bottom left. Um, this shows all of the interconnections between her students, and you can see that they're, they're quite connected. Um, also of interest is that you see that Vicky is kind of on the outside uh, looking in, for lack of a better way of saying it. Uh, that's an indication, basically, that, you know, Vicky is definitely reaching out to her students, but she's not making herself the center of attention. And that actually tends to be a really good pattern in our, in our communities, right? The, the, the instructor should be there to provide support, to, you know, redirect if, if it's needed. Um, but the hope is really that uh, um, Yellow Dig is a place where the students are interacting, exchanging information, um, and, and helping each other. And those interactions really help drive the overall um, interest in the community and value for those students. They start to come more voluntarily. They start to see you know, more positive outcomes. Brian, by way of clarification, um, Susan Marie has asked if uh, you were talking about links shared equal, equaling posts made. And I, I just thought you might want to go back and, and clarify that. Yeah. So, um, uh, link shared is 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 literally hyperlinks inside of posts, right? So a lot of what students will do is link out to other source material, and we count the number of links that are um, put into posts. Incidentally, we also count how often those links are clicked. Um, so if you want a really deep level um, data, you can often pull that from our report section. Um, but uh, uh, in this case, number of links shared is referring to hyperlinks within posts or comments. And then, yeah, and then this would be the average time, number of times that they were, you know, actually clicked that somebody interacted with them and went out that um, other material. Any other questions that may have come up, Bob? We are uh, okay at the moment, so please proceed. All right. Well, um, I guess without further ado, I guess I want to um, sort of turn it back over to Vicki. Um, you know, one of the questions I guess that she had from running this in her own class is whether participation, you know, in with, with the help forum uh, in her class was really helping students uh, learn. So I'll turn it over to you to, to finish out that story. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, before I do that, I just want to make one comment on what you just talked about with the sharing and the listening scores. Um, one thing that I've done over the last couple of semesters is, is in that intro video, I say to the students, you know, because I do run the discussion boards in a very open format, um, I say to them, you can go through the entire semester and never share any new content, but you're adding value to the conversation by commenting and furthering information and interacting with your peers. And I've always kind of thought of this like if we were in a classroom, there's some students who are just natural hand raisers and they're you know, speaking out and, and they're bringing new information, but there's other students who are adding a lot of value to the course and the conversation by bringing their perspectives to what those students are raising. So I think that Yellow Dig can really respond well to both kinds of learners. Some students are more Sort of extroverted and outgoing and other students want to take some time and reflect on what their their peers are saying and i really appreciated that as part of the tool that it allows both types of students to um, to be successful in the discussion so with that um as brian was saying what what i was really interested in was you know i had this help forum going in my epidemiology class this summer and I was really feeling like the students were getting some benefit out of this, but I wanted to see if I could quantify that in any way. So as Brian said, my, my kind of research question was, is there a benefit to students using and engaging in the health forum over and above the benefit that they get just from participating in the discussion by itself? So in the member reports, we all have access for our classes to 
the number of posts and the number of comments that students are making in Yellow Dig throughout the semester. And then I asked the, the wonderful folks at Yellow Dig to help me out and get that same information just for posts that are tagged with the help forum topic. So I have a help forum topic in my, um, in my Yellow Dig that students tag those question and answers with. And then what I was curious about was, could I then relate the final grades and assignment grades for my students to engaging in the help forum, um, either asking a question, so measured by posting in the help forum, or by answering questions um, measured by commenting in the help forum. And if Brian, you can go to the next slide. So these, these are results um, looking at the final grades of my students in this course. So this was 33 students in a six week intensive introduction to epidemiology course. And the first model that I looked at, that's those little, the little blue squares on top, uh, model one, I was just adjusting for any participation in the discussion. So this is the effect of participating in the help forum, either asking or answering a question independent of all other participation in the yellow dig discussion that students would just do you know, for their final course grade. And what I found in that first model was a significant positive association in the final grades with posting a question, with um, answering a, a, with a comment, and also with the number of comments. The number of comments is um, because there's so many comments the effect on the final grade from for one comment is really, really tiny, which is why it's kind of hard to see the, um, the error bars in that, that last column, but that, that was statistically significant in the, um, the first model. In the second model, I additionally adjusted for how many courses students have taken in our online MPH program prior to this epidemiology course, because I was thinking that students who have more experience and have taken more coursework in the program may naturally be more likely to get better grades anyway. So I wanted to kind of take out um, that adjustment. So in the second model, you can see that the results were attenuated um, for the most part. So the posting a question in the help forum was no longer significantly associated and neither was uh, the number of comments posted, but there was still a significant association between engaging in answering a comment in the help forum and a positive impact to the student's final grade. I didn't make charts for these, but I also looked at this separately for problem sets and for quizzes in the class. So problem sets were assignments on which students were really encouraged to collaborate with each other. So they were, um, they were encouraged to talk about this in Yellow Dig in the help forum, to be sharing their answers, to, to be working with each other on how to get things done. And the results for that were almost identical to those for the final grade. So there was some positive associations when I just additionally adjusted for previous coursework, some of those were attenuated, but there was still a significant positive association between engaging in the help forum, answering questions and the student's problem set grade. For the quizzes, the associations were in the same direction, but there were none that was still significant, statistically significant in that final model. So all of the associations were attenuated, so they, they were no longer statistically significant. This is interesting because the quizzes were assignments on which students were asked to work independently. So they, they weren't collaborating or working with each other at all via the help forum. So I can kind of see two ways to interpret this, and I'm just not sure which is correct yet. So we, we could interpret that as students do better or they, they see a benefit in their grades on those assignments where they can work directly together, but that learning doesn't translate to assignments in which they have to work independently. Or it may be a function of the sample size. The um, associations were in the direction that I would expect them to be, and it may just be that in this class of 33 students where the quiz grades aren't as widely distributed as the problem set grades or the final grades, that I just didn't have the statistical power to see st statistically significant associations. So this fall, I'm running two more classes um, using Yellow Dig as a help forum. And, and the wonderful folks there are gonna help me gather these data again. And so I can hopefully see in three classes of students, first of all, do these results replicate? And second, is there um, any benefit now that I've got a larger sample size, can I see benefits in assignments that 
students aren't specifically encouraged to collaborate on using the Yellow Dig Help Forum. So that will be a really interesting kind of follow on to this analysis. Great. I, oh, sorry, I, I, I was going to surface a couple questions. Um, yeah. If this is a good time, it seemed like it might have been a good time. So that's why I jumped in. Um, uh, first of all, I, I just want to say that if you're a Yellow Dig client and uh, you want assistance with your data from the platform, we'll be happy to help you with that. That's first of all. But second of all, just heading back just a, a, a slight bit, um, we got a question about uh, the philosophy that you articulated about students adding value by commenting, whether that led you to equalize points for comments versus posts. Uh, the participation point setting as an incentive is quite complex in terms of how it tells the students what you value, like, is the full quote. So I was hoping you could address that. That's such a great question. Um, and the answer is yes, absolutely. So uh, I can't remember the exact points right now, but my comments are worth um, more than the posts are. So when students post, I think, well, I'm not even going to say the numbers, but they get a certain amount of, of points. But for comments, um, students definitely get more, more points than they do for an initial post. But students who post initially get all those benefits of people of points for people commenting on them. So it's interesting to see how students use those in different ways. Yeah, just to jump in a little bit there, um, you know, we set global sort of default settings for the platform, uh, which will come up unless somebody at your institution has changed them. Uh, will come up for uh, for you when you create your communities and. Um, those recommendations are definitely based on research that I've personally done and, uh, you know, to try to optimize some of what we're talking about related to comments versus posts, right? We definitely see that, like I said, the conversation ratio drives so many other variables. And if you think about even the results of this analysis, it's basically saying that, you know, students being able to comment back and forth and have conversations is the part of the thing that is sort of educationally valuable. Um, and I don't know, if you think about the sort of initial reason for putting in a discussion board, the, the, the conversation that students have is, is sort of like the motivator to begin with. So it's kind of, it, it makes sense that it's that way. And so in our point structure, we definitely, uh, you know, tend to suggest that comments are worth at least as much as posts. And as Vicky said, if people create a post and they get a good conversation started, the sort of social points that they get for having those conversations for people reacting to their posts can make the post worth a little bit more, but you still want to encourage plenty of commenting. And, uh, you know, is it fair to say that that sort of helps create a bit of student agency in the communities and in the courses in general, allowing them to feel like they have the freedom to do this kind of work. I would say that's definitely true in what I've heard from my students and the feedback that I've received. Um, like I said before, some students, it's really interesting to see how the students sort of interact with the point system. Um, you can tell there's definitely some students who like to, to post new material and then just respond to that and, and allow those social points to build up. Whereas there's other students who are much more interested in commenting um, and furthering conversation in that way, and they don't necessarily want to bring in something new, and that allows them to to work with a discussion in their particular style. Excellent. Uh, there was one other question. I, I think um, I'm going to surface to you now, but I don't think you should answer it until later. And that is regarding the network graph. People are very excited about that. So maybe at the end of the session, if you can show people how to access that, Brian, that would be great. Sure. Okay. And back to you guys. Awesome. Well, I just, I just have one more um, thing to show you guys. And, and Bob, you teed it up perfectly. Brian, if you could go to the next slide. Um, oh, so, well, the conclusion that <laughs> answering and engage, that's always important. Um, answering and engaging with questions in the help forum um, was significantly associated with an increase in final grade of problem set grades, even in those fully adjusted models. So that's, um, that's what I got out of this initial analysis. But as I said, this was a limited number of students, so 33 students in one class. And I'm really interested at the end of this semester to see if these results can be replicated and strengthened even um, in a combined analysis with more students and more statistical power. So we're staying tuned for that. Go ahead, Brian. 
So the last thing that, that I wanted to talk about that Bob really teed up nicely was um, I see benefits to the HELP Forum. It feels to me like a more engaged and interactive community, but I wanted to share a little bit about what the students are saying too. So um, these are comments that students have given to each other within the HELP Forum. So these aren't things that they're, they're telling me. These are things that they're, um, they're communicating with each other in support of each other and their own learning. So, you know, the HELP Forum has saved me so many times when I was speaking out about the homework. So they're, you know, responding to having that additional support system and the additional amount of connection with their other students. And then the other thread I really love because, you know, there's a student saying, I love how, I appreciate how everybody is being vulnerable and willing to ask questions and to say what they don't know. And then another student is responding that, you know, yes, sometimes I feel silly asking questions, but I'm so glad that we have this forum that allows us to do this and it gives us a tremendous boost in our learning. Um, so that that really feels good to me that it's, you know, it's not just something that I'm seeing and potentially seeing having a benefit to the students learning and, and absorption of the content, but it's also creating for them a little bit more connection, a little bit more collaboration um, and ability to, to work with each other and to get support they need, you know, especially now when we are also isolated in our regular lives as well as you know, being in an online platform, which can be isolating in and of itself. So that, uh, that's what I found to be the most positive um, result from this so far. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, and, and you know, you're right. I mean, in the current situation, finding ways for students to connect when they're not necessarily on the ground or, or in the regular areas, uh, this can be a great boon. But I also wanted to ask you if you felt like that this informed your teaching at all as you were going through the, the, the seeing what the questions were and perhaps, you know, what topics they were on, if that changed anything about what you were doing otherwise? That's an awesome question. And, and yes, absolutely. Um, so, you know, this is, I've been kind of building up to, to having a help forum as a primary piece of the discussion for a couple of semesters. And it's definitely guided me in understanding where students are having problems, um, which, hasn't always been where I thought they were having problems. So that's that's been really informative. I think another way that it's really guided me is in trusting the students more to get to the solution themselves. You know, my, my tendency if somebody had a question either over email or on the discussion was to jump in and try to provide an answer as the, as the instructor because that's what I'm there for, right? Um, and so this has given me an opportunity to let the students to stand back a little bit and let the students create that learning for themselves, which I think is, is a lot more beneficial. I have to apologize, there's a plane going on ahead, so sorry about that. Um, but it's, yeah, it's really guided my teaching style um, on the discussion boards and an email to allow the students to have that for themselves. Excellent. Uh, Brian, did you have uh, anything further you wanted to add? No, I mean, I think one thing that's, uh, that I see when I, you know, saw these quotes um, uh, and, and that I think about a lot in terms of, um, you know, why we talk about Yellow Dig, uh, you know, as being communities rather than a discussion board or something, you know, we talk about it as a community because, um, you know, I definitely think of communities as being a place where people come interact with other people to make sure that their needs are met, right? And I think what we see in a lot of cases when we give students some flexibility to ask questions and to sort of bring their own things to the table, uh, they end up having conversations that are sort of meeting their needs. And as an instructor, I know that like I was not always good at knowing everything that, that students needed. Um, and so they can, they can you know, they're, they're, they have some, you know, Bob used the word agency before, but they have some uh, agency to kind of, you know, feel out and, and build their own learning experience uh, with that freedom. And I think that we've generally seen that most students really take advantage of that. Uh, whereas I think a lot of instructors are sort of afraid to, you know, afraid that things are going to go off the rails if they, you know, give too much freedom. So, um... You know, we, uh, we have some time left and we're happy to take questions, I imagine. Um, before we get to that point though, Brian, maybe it would be cool to show the network graph and how people uh, can access that, if that's all right. Yeah, 
is is that showing? Uh, no, we're still on uh, the student okay. comments slide. I might have to stop the share and uh, start it. In the meantime, let's see. Here we go. Is it showing now? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, this is a demo uh, community of ours that's, you know, for a Business 101 class. Uh, admittedly, we haven't been in here posting too actively lately. Um, but the network graph should appear on the left hand side here. Um, if you aren't seeing that within your network for some reason, uh, please get in touch with us and we'll make sure that it's turned on. Uh, I believe it should be turned on for everyone, uh, but just in case. Um, uh, but right there, you can click and it will open uh, the network graph showing the interactions between students. Um, and some different things come up uh, as you hover over individual uh, participants within the community. It'll show you sort of how connected they are to other members and when they last connected with somebody. Um, and connections are, are, you know, comments and replies to each other. Um, so basically, if they, if they aren't sort of responding and taking part in conversations, that last connected number will go up. Their, um, you know, responses and, and um, received responses from others will, will be lower. Um, and there's some color coding to show sort of how long it's been since they've connected. With so them. before you leave there, Brian, uh, is this dynamic or, or uh, what would happen if I wanted to see? Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so you can do things, you know, to pull out and, and more easily see which students are connected. Um, you know, you have these students that are uh, not connected at all. Those might be students you want to reach out to. Um, we can show profile photos if you've gotten used to seeing their smiling faces. Um, and so this is a pretty dynamic way um, to see, you know, how students are connecting. And each time that you load it, it will sort of load up the, the newest data um, to, to draw out these graphs. So, um, you know, the, the use case that we see for this is basically, you know, when we see students that are outside of the standard, uh, you know, or I should say, when we see students that are not well connected to other students, those are typically the students that we worry about. Um, and, and that includes, by the way, students that might be really active in the community, right? So there are some students that will post a lot, uh, but if they're not interacting with other students, uh, they are, they're more likely to perform poorly in the class and they're more likely to drop out of that class. Um, so some other research we've done with other partners has shown that that's actually one of the reasons that we started building these into the platform. Um, so if you're looking at this and you're seeing the, you know, seeing students like this that are completely unconnected, you know, or students that are kind of on the outside looking in, those would be the ones that um, you might want to encourage to sort of interact with other students uh, a little bit more, or maybe, you know, you just interact with them a little bit and that'll get them going again or, or get them sort of pulled into a conversation. Uh, to go along with the graph is a chart that shows you, um, you know, some more information about the interconnectedness of different students um, and sort of how long it's been since they really connected. So uh, between the visualization and the data, and, and you know, this is sortable uh, so that you can, you know, find students that uh, haven't been getting incoming connections or haven't been actually talking to other students and reaching out, things like that. So Brian, um, there are a number of people who are who don't who don't have the network graph uh, activated in the sidebar yet, but there is a super secret top secret way to get there. Uh, would it be okay to share that with this uh, group? Do you think? Uh, yeah, but I've forgotten the URL that you asked. I, I know. <laughs> you brought it up. I didn't know what it was. So all you do is at the end of the URL. Um, after the number that re represents your community, you type in network hyphen graph. Right. And then you click enter, and then you'll be good to go. Get rid of the little chart there. The yeah, I, I mean, right. It would just, just network hyphen graph. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, so that's something that we'll have to check on those uh, uh, feature flags. That's a that's a newer feature. So yeah, um, but it'll be it'll be coming very soon. Yeah. Um, all right, and uh, certainly open for more questions. Anybody or anything else that uh, Vicky would like to add? You're muted. Thanks, Bob. Um, I think I saw one question that was just about the um, the analysis and the correlations between the the positive grades and um, the student comments. And just to you know, I was asking, was it associated with the difference in a letter grade or what that output was? So I just wanted to clarify that the um, and I should have said this before. The x-axis is percentage points on the student grade. So we saw between a five and 10% or five and 10% increase in the student grade and the jets are going over again, um, associated with um, commenting and engaging in that help forum after, um, after adjustment for the overall discussion grade and for previous coursework. So that, that x-axis is percentage of student grade. I apologize for missing those questions. Somehow I had the wrong tab open, so I'm glad that you found them. Um, and I think, I think we've hit all of those questions at this point that are in the Q&A. Um, and uh, shall we uh, wrap it up, do you think? Yeah, if there's no more questions, we definitely can. Um, you know, I, I would say that this, this analysis or similar ones have been done on um, other use cases. Um, and, you know, we've, we've continue to try to um, do this kind of research to show the efficacy of yellow dig. And as Bob mentioned, we're definitely happy to share out any data, uh, you know, you can't get uh, just from within the platform. Um, and we do have sort of a full-time, uh, you know, data scientist on, on staff that can help pull some of that data or create some visualizations if that's helpful at all. I think you know the number one challenge for us in a lot of cases of, of testing um, these kinds of questions is you know matching up our data to whatever data you have about the outcomes, right? So we can't get student grades in our platform. Um, you know we can't see drops in our platform, and that always requires us then to sort of partner with different institutions and different faculty members. We're always really thankful when people are willing to, to do um, that research because, I mean, we, first of all, we want Yellow Day to work as best as it can. And we also see that it uh, works really well in a lot of cases. So having that data is valuable to us in terms of where we should focus on in the future. And hopefully it's also valuable to the people that are using it uh, in being able to see that, you know, the things that they are doing are actually having. Uh, true positive outcome. So, so if, if, if an instructor or instructional designer is interested in working on with us on that, uh, you can contact Brian or, or me or anyone else here, frankly, but uh, certainly we'll be uh, able to make sure that those things go in the right direction. And uh, my email is really simple. It's bob at yellowdig.com. That's B-O-B -B, in case you were wondering. Oddly enough, I don't use my last name in the in my email address, but uh, there's a reason for that. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to announce uh, before we get going is that uh, we now have an ebook available on Yellow Dig efficacy, and uh, that is something we can provide for you. Uh, Kaylee, can you share a link to that in the chat, perhaps? Yep, grabbing that right now. Awesome. And again, uh, the webinars that we have coming up, there's a demo webinar, I believe on November 5th. Uh, we have a, a Q and A session on November 12th. Um, and uh, the various conferences uh, that Brian is presenting at are on the screen. And uh, we'll let you look at those for a second. Um, and thank you so much for coming and uh, would love to have any feedback that you might have. And we're looking forward to seeing you at the next one. Thank you so much, Vicki. Thanks, thank Vicky. you guys. I really appreciate the opportunity and also want to say, you know, if there's folks listening now who are also working on this kind of um, format for Yellow Dig in a help forum, 
um, please do get in touch because I would love to learn how other people are doing this and to collaborate as well. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now.